Alright. Welcome back with Hitman. Heartbreaker. That's right. Alright, we do this again. Uh, am I going as the cowboy? Yes. What is this? What's in there? Did I want the shotgun? No, fuck that briefcase. We're taking ninja stars. Go. Taking a short baller. Do I need the crowbar? Alright, keep the crowbar. Alright, we're gonna get this motherfucker now. Yeah, yeah. I know where he is. I know what he's doing. Right? I know what's around me. Blah, blah. Alright, I gotta set my timer alarm clock oh my god Ugh. there we go welcome to mendoza 47 it seems you've arrived just in time your target is showing off the grounds of vinedo yates to his current clients and potential victims Michelle Pacheco and Phoebe Morris. I doubt Newcomb's assassination is on the couple's gift registry, but given his intentions, it's better than silverware. Good luck. Can I look at the briefing? Oh, I can restart the mission? Okay, look at that. Mr. Yates, it's Aaron, sir, from the firm. I came as quickly as I could. Give me that. Yes, sir, I have the file. Sorry it took so long, but I've had so, to you know, to a like, thing, and I, I couldn't get uh, right. what was I, what was I talk about something? Yeah, I'm so overworked, man. Uh, May I see your invitation, please? Gracias, senor. Enjoy the party. What a great looking hat. Shame what happened. It was the most charming little village. Almost made it onto the UNESCO World Heritage List. fucking briefcase last time man and then I was like hiding here and then they saw me and then the guy came in and he like fuck that shit man all right wait a minute I'm gonna plan my escape over here oh my god like three guys have
All right. Getting awfully tired of this spectacle food trip. Whatever happened to shellfish buffets? Uh. The fuck is he, man? Good evening. Yo, what's up? Here he is. Oh, that wasn't him. <laughs> I thought it was him, man. That's fucked up. That was the guy. That was the guy, man. Wasn't it? Good evening, 47. Your target is finally <laughs> the wrong guy. A wedding planner whose CV reads like a Shakespearean tragedy. While his job is to make dream weddings a reality, he is not in the business of fairy tale endings. When one half of a couple catches his eye, Newcomb will ingratiate himself with them. Then during the course of his work, he will covertly murder their partner to clear the way for his romantic overtures. Our client was once the subject of Newcomb's infatuation and lost the love of her life as a result. Having some suspicions, she's followed Newcomb's career closely ever since and noticed a pattern of ill-fated lovers emerging in his wake. When she heard he'd been hired by a couple planning a destination wedding in Argentina, she contacted us about putting an end to Newcomb's sanguine love stories. Good luck, 47. <laughs> I hit the wrong guy, man. That is fucked up. Senor, may I recommend the house Cabernet Sauvignon? Fine vintage. Strong aromatic notes. Black currant and red cherries. On the palate, a trickle of sweet spice and savory plums. Yes, not bad. Senor is a connoisseur. I dabble. 
You would be scandalized, senor, at just how many of the upper crust who only pretends to know why. Why, that ghastly former right-wing politician Tamara Vidal. She came in earlier and asked for a Pinot Noir. Oh, can you believe it? God, ours is a civilization in decline. A pleasure to serve you, senor. Oh, <laughs> you're wrapping up the body. That's the woman, isn't it? What's going on, man? Is that him? I'm more of a so, I'm looking for this dumb motherfucker. Man. Last time he was walking by. Hello. How do you do? Greetings, sir. Hmm. I actually wanted to talk about something, but I don't know. I don't think I don't find it appropriate to talk about it in English. Or better said, like you know, it's like it's like a European matter, not an like you know, like not an American matter. I was talking about the yeah, but you know, it's everywhere. People dying. Okay, let's talk about it. You know, let's talk about it. So um. So, uh, if you want to know, so you should, I recommend, you know, if you want to, if you want to understand what I'm talking about, what I'm going to say now, right, if you want to understand it, uh, you should watch like a documentary of the plague, okay, you should listen to what I say to the, you know, the story I'm, 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 I'm about to tell you. And then watch like a documentary about the plea. In the blood wash clinic again. And you know. So you know it's like. I, I'm a cleaner right. And I work for a cleaning company. Or better said I work for a huge ass company. Right. A company. A huge ass service company. Okay. And you know cleaning service is just one of these. Uh, a service sectors they you know the company works in it's one of many service sectors so the company I work for is huge in a sense it's like it's like like I said right like in the devil's advocate the movie right you have this uh, what's his name again Milton Milton Bradley right Milton John Milton yeah John Milton you know, and this guy is like, you know, huge. He has a lawyer, he has a law firm, he has uh, weapons, he sells weapons, he sells, you know, chemicals, you know, cleaning agents. He, in, Milton is involved in everything, right? That's what he says, right? So I'm working for a huge ass company, which is like, a, a, how you say, which is a co firm, a cooperative firm basically right so it's part of something even bigger okay now the thing is like what I wanted to talk about the plague right so I was in the blood wash clinic I was cleaning up and you know like my company be raising the prices man you know saying my value right my fucking value my value is rising because I'm so fucking good okay I'm fast I'm efficient I'm fucking fast I'm reliable right 
and you know I'm, I'm I'm and the people trust me and the people like me I work my ass off seeing like oh that guy working his ass off people feeling the ear is burning man you know what I'm saying that's how fast I <laughs> Man, people feeling the air burning, right? Because I'm so fucking fast. Like, just like, oh yeah, he's doing his job. He's cleaning up. That can only be cleaning up, man. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, my value, my my value is rising. So the company be raising the prices, right, on my ass. And you know, if if customers basically want, you know, it's sadly I sadly have to put it that way. If customers want me to clean up for them then they're supposed to pay a little bit more. It's like... It's it's not like they're raising the prices. I mean, it's... it's How do you say? It is tariff... Uh, tariff... So there's like... Uh, how do you say? I'm losing it, man. I'm overworked. There's like a, a, a union, yeah. A union. The union basically pushed for these... Uh, for, for for higher payment, right? And with the inflation going on, now they're raising the prices. And, you know, the company I work for, they also get money. Right? They also earn money through that. So they'd be raising the prices, basically, right? So, yeah, you know, people are uh, kind of like... Uh, 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 so people people be feeling it, right? They feel, they'd be feeling the inflation, right? So anyway, I was like, you know, like... You know, people don't have to have to hire a cleaning company in order for things to be get to get cleaned, right? I mean, you can do it your fucking self, right? Nobody be stopping you from cleaning shit up, right? If you're in a hospital, huh? What the fuck? My headphones, my headphones turned off. So you know, if you're, fuck. so if you're in, if, if you're in a hospital, for example, right, and you're a doctor, I mean, you know, like, or you're a nurse, you know what I mean, or you're, I don't fucking know, man, a jan, like, you know what I mean. If you're a doctor, nobody be fucking stopping you from grabbing a mop and cleaning shit up. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, no one be stopping you. Like, doctor, what are you doing? Oh, I gotta clean this up. Why? Because, you know, it's dirty. Well, you, it's, you get my point, right? Or, oh, I gotta disinfect this and that and this and that, right? Or like, oh, I gotta clean a toilet. Why? Because some, you know, because the toilet has to be clean. My friend, nobody be stopping you from cleaning shit up. Absolutely nobody. If you're a trucker, you know what I mean? If you're a trucker and you want to clean up your fucking truck, nobody be fucking stopping you from cleaning shit up. Or let's say... Or if you're working, if you're working at McDonald's, you get my point. If you're working at McDonald's, and you know you work in the cash register, and at, and you know what I'm saying, and then it's like you know, oh, this the table gotta be clean, man. Clean that. The manager saying like, to clean that table up. Nobody be stopping you from cleaning shit up, no matter where the fuck you are. You know what I'm saying? It's not. You get my point, right? Nobody be stopping you, so you can clean if you you know. If things have to be clean, you can do it yourself. You're allowed to. You're allowed to. You're not only allowed to, people expect you to do it. Right? In every fucking business you every fucking business you run. Every fucking business you run. You know, like let's say the government expects things to be clean. <sighs> you know what I mean? So everybody who runs a business has a it's, it, that's the way it is. If you have a restaurant, right? What do they, you know? Health inspection. Everything, right? The inspectors come, they check everything, and what do they want? What do they want? They want everything to be clean. You go to New York, I mean, that's the prime example. Shit's gotta be clean in New York. You get my point? And it's, it's self explanatory. It is, in a sense, right? It's, in a sense, it's self explanatory. And, you know, nobody be stopping you from cleaning shit up. So you can a either hire a, you know a cleaning company to clean shit up for you if you got the money, or you can b do it yourself. Now if you do b, you save a lot of money, but you know you got to put in a lot of work, right? You got to put in a lot of work. You save a lot of money. Now the thing is, what I'm trying to get at is, you know, where does this all come from? 
why is it so self you know why 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 are you allowed to do that right you're allowed to do that you don't have to you know what I'm saying and you save tax money you save yourself paying taxes by cleaning shit up yourself and they expect everything to be clean now why is that where does that come from and this is what I mean this comes from the time of the plague this comes from the plague so you know I was looking at a documentary right you know just now and it it, it matches up with what I was you know thinking about and really matches up what I was thinking about you know in bed and then at the next day when I was in the blood wash clinic cleaning up it matches exactly what I was what went through my head so what went through my head was like you know exactly the same what I just said you know nobody stopping you from cleaning shit up yourself as long as it's clean everything is okay nobody gives a fuck it's true why else would they hire you know immigrants illegal immigrants to clean shit up for them because nobody gives a fuck as long as everything is clean nobody gives a fuck a flying fuck 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 and if it's an illegal immigrant who done it right in the United States nobody gives a fuck as long as shit's clean right or else shit would be dirty yeah that's right and then what would, what, what would happen so the thing is like where does it come from like I said it comes from the time of the plague so you know when people discovered that the plague is you know the, that the plague uh, came from these like it was like Nostradamus right Nostradamus who discovered the cure or better said like who who had like a, a remedy against the plague you know and it's like these the, like these rats having these fleas and then these fleas having these bacteria or basically like these fleas having fleas themselves in a, in that sense right and these and these fucking fleas getting into your skin, right? Getting through your skin, small enough to go through your skin, and you know, eat you from the inside out, basically, right? These 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 fleas. And Nostradamus basically found out that these fleas hate hygiene. These fleas fucking hate hygienics. Everything that has to do with hygienics, these these fucking fleas, they stay away from it. You know what I mean? So people were pretty fucking unhygienic back in. They, they call it the Middle Ages, right? The end of the Middle Ages. They call it Middle Ages. So people were fucking unhygienic in the Middle Ages, right? And, you know, for a time, they got through with it, right? They, for a time, they got through with it. But the more and more people, you know, the more and more the cities grew and the more and more populated, the you know, the, the Europe became, the more and more it came, like, it became a problem, right? more and more it became like a breeding ground a transmissible breeding ground for let's say for um, microorganisms okay so yeah the plague really brutal they had like these this, this you know this lung plague and black plague and blah you know okay so uh where was i <laughs> so yeah okay as soon as they found out you know with the, that hygienics that these these fleas hate, hate hygienics and you know and Nostradamus basically proved it. He had like this kind of this eat, the, eat the, this oil, right? And you know, it, it, yeah. Well, he proved that it was hygienics that kept, you know, the plague away. Same way, like you wash in soap, and you know, the risk of infection decreases dramatically, right? Same way you wear in a mask, the risk of infection decreases significantly, right? The same way, I don't know, you taking a fucking shower, or let's say the same way you flush in the toilet, right? The risk of an infection when you flush in the toilet decreases, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That's why we fucking flush our toilets. Right? That's why you're supposed to flush that shit. Because that the risk of infection decreases dramatically. Choo -choo. Right? That's right. That's, that's because we got, that's, that's why we're supposed to wipe our ass after taking a shit. Am I right? Am I right? So that the risk of infection decreases, right? So this is how the plague basically spread through unhygienic behavior. Okay? So when the people found out, when, you know, when governments, states, right, found out that, that you know, hygienics is the key to, fight, to you know, defeating the plague, they, everybody was fucking forced to clean shit up. So it was at that time when, you know, you remember, you know, like when you see in... When you see like Disney cartoons, for example, like a Disney movie, 
I don't know, like for example, Beauty and the Beast, right? You know, when they... Or like Asterix and Obelix, right? Or like, I don't fucking know, the fucking Smurfs, right? You see, you know, you got this village, right? And it's like kind of medieval, right? And then you see in like the Smurfs, the first thing they do, for example, the Smurfs, right? The first fucking thing they kind of like do is when they wake up, is they sweep the fucking house. Did you ever notice that? Right? Or when you watch Beauty and the Beast, right? In the beginning, when Belle walks around, with the, and the first, bonjour, bonjour, right? They saying good morning, and what the fuck do they do? The first thing what they do is they fucking sweep the house. You get my point? They fucking sweep the house. That's what the fucking first thing they do. They sweep the house. And at the end, when they go to bed, before they go to bed, what do they do? That's right, they fucking sweep the house. Why? Why is that, huh? Because the government... Because it was mandatory. It was made mandatory to prevent the plague from, let's say, spreading. Because they found out that hygienics is the key in defeating the plague. Okay? You get my point? So everybody, it was mandatory to fucking clean shit up. So, you know, you had these lords, they were, they were observating... And, you know, the lords were going through towns and going through villages and going through cities and they were inspecting people. They were going in your house. They would go in your house and see if shit's cleaned up, how, it, how, how things look. Now, if they would come, come into my room, they would say, Jerry, clean shit up. I would say, okay, right away, right? Because, you know, right now my room doesn't look that nice. But, you know what, I, I, I'm not expecting any visitors, Okay. And you know, I sh I shower every day, and I have a toilet, and my toilet is fuck. Oh, my toilet is fucking clean, right? So anyway, back to the story, right? <sighs> so these lords would go and inspect people, right? And you know what would happen if they catch you not cleaning shit up? So you know, it, it went on went on like this. So if the guy, if you're a man and you 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 provide for your family, you administer your wife to clean shit up and that's why you always see the woman in the morning sweeping the house right and if the woman can't or won't do it then the children are supposed to do it right so if the children don't do it then you have to do it so if these guys come and they catch they see the woman not cleaning shit up or you know they are saying like oh it's dirty in here clean shit up and then they watch you and then the woman, like, yes, yes, right away, right away, right? Or the kids. So if they don't want to do it, then you're supposed to do it, right? So if you don't want to do it, so this is the thing, right? So you had France, you have France, you have Spain, you have Germany, right, for example. So now in France, they said, like, they, w they would maybe say, like, you know, okay, you're not cleaning up, so we're going to punish you. Punishment by death. So they would maybe, you know, chop your head off. You get my point? You get my point? So you go to Spain. They would say, "Oh, you're not cleaning shit up." Well, then you're, we're gonna we're gonna lock you up, right? Punishment by imprisonment. You get my point? So in Germany, they say like, "Oh, you're not cleaning shit up." Well, then we're gonna tax your ass. You're, then you're gonna have to pay taxes. That's right. Cleaning. Let's, how do you call it in English? <sighs> like, uh, 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 you know, then you have to pay taxes. So you know, because it was made mandatory and it was a duty for every citizen to clean shit up, you know, sweep the house, sweep the house, get, you know what I'm saying, be, be more hygienic, right, clean shit up, the same shit I'm doing, right, for a living right now, but that was just, you know, every, every human back in the days was, had, had to be able to clean stuff up, so this is what I don't get nowadays, see, this is, you see, my ancestors, they survived the fucking plague. That is, that is, you know, that, 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 I'm the living proof. I'm the fucking living proof that my ancestors survived that way. Not only the plague, but also this government, uh, you know, uh, evading this government punishment. You know what I mean? Because every fucking human back in those days had, was, had to be able to clean shit up. 
Now I look nowadays, you look at people, they can't even they're pretty degenerate. Many, many, many people are pretty, pretty degenerate when it comes to that. So if the plague were ravaging, well, let's say if a new disease were ravaging and, you know, the only way to beat it were, would be hygienic, so people would die like flies. And you look at the COVID, I'm sorry, yes. We'll get to that, we'll get to that, okay? Um, so where was I? They would go around the lords, yeah. So yeah, you know, in Germany, you have to pay taxes. So, you know, so you didn't want to fulfill your duty, you didn't want to clean shit up, so what do you do? You need you had to pay taxes, right? You owed money to the lords. And the lords would bring that money to, you know, to the to the government, to the king or emperor, I think it was king, right? Okay. To the bank, right? To the bank. Okay. So, you know, then you needed money. So then you would pawn your shit to the Jews. The Jews would give you money for something you possessed. And with that money, you would pay off your debt. You would pay your taxes because you were just too fucking lazy and stupid to clean shit up. You get my point? So then many, many people were just too fucking lazy and stupid to clean shit up. And they pawned their shit to the Jews. So the Jews got more and more money and blah. And then, you know, people became mad at the Jews. Even though the Jews were the ones who helped them pay off their debt to the state. It's, it's that simple, right? It's that simple. Something was made mandatory, you didn't want to do it, it was your duty to do it, and you didn't want it to do it because you were just too stupid and fucking lazy. It served a purpose, and it still serves a purpose today, right? So the taxes, you know or better said, like, these, these health codes, these health inspections, you know today, right, they all stem from that time of the plague, right? It, I, they just saw, they just, you know, in the documentary, say, like, 13, the year 1348 or something, right? Th you know, 13, and then they said, like, the plague came back, and it came back in waves, it came back in waves, right? It came back so many times in waves, <laughs> Right, that people fled as soon as people heard of the new continent, right? America, Columbus discovering, you know, the new continent. As soon as they, they went over to the new continent because they wanted to run, you know, they wanted to escape the plague, and this, you know, this mandatory shit. They wanted to be free, right? And what, 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 it, what occurred was basically they owned property, right? They claimed new property on this new continent, right? And then they would generate more money, and then the church would come, and yeah, then you know, then then the then the European states would just send the church after these people, right? And the church would, you know, uh, uh, how do you say? Would um, you know, they would take their possessions and shit, right, through some kind of measurements. So anyway, that's the thing, right? That's the thing. <sighs> You know, you, you were supposed to clean shit up, and you didn't want to do it, and then you had to pay taxes, and you didn't want to pay taxes, so you pawned your shit to the Jews in order to pay taxes, or else you had to go to jail or punishment by death, right? So you, and then you, in the end, you were fucked simply because you were just too dumb and lazy to clean shit up, even though it was mandatory to get rid of a disease, a pandemic, to end a pandemic. It was mandatory to end a fucking pandemic. And if you had to do it every day, well, then you had to fucking do it every day. So now, you know, it's the same thing as back in the days with the plague. You have the COVID, and it's coming in waves, and it's coming in waves, and in waves. And, you know, people are, you know, everybody's, not, everybody's saying, fuck it, right? That's just the way it is. It's the new normal, right? People dying in the hospital or at home because of the COVID. Okay? And, you know, you've been warned. You've been warned by the government. The government has warned you. The government said, get your vaccination. The government said, like, wear your mask. The government said, wash your hands. Yes, I know. But the government never told you to, like, clean shit up. I mean, that would go too far, right? The government can't punish you the way, you know, the, the government can't punish you nowadays the way it punished you, you know, in the Middle Ages. You know what I mean? Lock you up. Chop your head off. 
Stuff like that, man, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, you're responsible. You're still responsible, and you still have those duties, but it's just not, no one's, no one is going after you. No one is going after you except the disease itself. So sooner or later, and this is what I'm trying to get at, because the COVID comes in waves and waves and waves, sooner or later, if you don't go after your duties, the disease is gonna get you. And nobody's going to give a fuck because you had been warned about it. And the thing what happens after that is, you know, you're thinking like, okay, you know, blah, shit's fine. And, you know, you didn't make, you didn't write down a will, did you? No, you didn't, right? You didn't write down any will. So, you know, what happens when you die is, when you die, right, imagine like, your landlord, right? Your landlord finds out, oh, the guy is dead, right? What do I do? What's he going to do, right? What's he going to do? So, you know, it's being announced that you're dead, right? Let's say your relatives live in far states away, right? Far, 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 far away states. They're not going to come to visit. They're not going to pick your shit up or something like that. So what's going to happen? All of your possession, all of your shit is going to get pawned, right? It's going to get pawned. It's gonna get sold. Your landlord is gonna throw everything out of the out of the house or out of you know. It's gonna throw everything out. All your shit is gonna land on the street and it's gonna be up for sale and up for grabs, right? That's just it. You didn't make any will, any final will, to say like, oh, I want my stuff to be to go here and there and here and there. Nothing, because you didn't believe that the disease was gonna get you sooner or later, right? You didn't think it. You didn't, you know, you didn't believe it. Well, then it happened. Then it happened, and you know why it happened? Because you didn't, so you didn't, uh, you didn't uh, go after your duties, after his duties, right? For example, you, I don't know, you didn't get vaccinated, right? You didn't wash your hands, you didn't, I don't know, man, you know what I mean? You didn't keep your social distancing, for example, right? You weren't, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, nobody gives a fuck. Sooner or later, they start, they, they start, you know, they start saying, fuck it. Right? We told them, we told them, we warned them, right? And if they, now if they die, it's their own fucking fault. You get my point? So you look at these documentaries, right? And they're telling you what, how the people were thinking and behaving when so many people died. And they, they looked for, I don't know, they turned, they turned religious. Many turned religious and fanatic and anarchistic and you know they, they, they radical they radicalized themselves because I don't know they, they were just too they, they, they were just too stupid and lazy they were telling you the most freaked out things right there was like this French king and he wanted he wanted an answer on on, on how how did how this pandemic you know happened and then these guys these doctors said like I don't know some kind of planetary constellation and some kind of degree and angle and that is the reason why the, the plague is there because of some kind of planetary constellation, right? And some other guy be saying, like, I don't know, it's, it's wrath of God. You know what I mean? The same shit today. The same stupid shit today. And you know what hasn't changed? The taxes. The, tax, the taxes still remain up to this day. Can you believe it? That is so fascinating. 700 years. Almost. 650 years of, of, of taxes of this, how do you call it, how do I call it in, in, in English? Clean taxes, cleaning taxes, hygienic taxes, some, you know what I'm saying? Taxes, these, these taxes are so old and they last up to this day because people are afraid of the plague, still, up to this day. You're, you know what I'm saying? Because the plague killed like they say the plague killed like a third of Europe. Now, when I was in elementary school, we had this nun, right? And this nun, the way she like laid it out, she laid it out that more. So they say like you look at it. I just looked at the documentary. It said like 25 million people died of the plague in Europe. Now, when I look, listen to my nun, uh, to the nun who taught, who, 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 you know, she she made it sound like you know almost all of Europe was gone. She. Like, I could almost swear she said like 65 million people died in Europe because of the plague. The black fucking plague. The black fucking plague. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how she, that's how, that's how she described it, man. 65 million people died. 65 million. 
So here they say 25 million, but I could swear it's like 65 million. So where are the where are the other 40 million? Now here's this funny thing. So they say like it started out with a ship, right? Now imagine like you know, this is this is these are these funny adventurous stories, and they're true. Imagine like you know, you're a pirate, for example, right? Or you're 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 a, you're a captain of a ship, right? You're a captain of a ship. And, you know, you see, like, this ship, and, you know, they, they call it a ghost ship, right? A ghost ship is a ship where nobody, you know, there's no living soul on board. So, you know, you, you enter this ghost ship, and you realize, like, all oh, these guys are all dead, right? Or, or, these guys have been dead a long time ago. What happened, right? And, you know, you're looking for valuables and shit, right? And, you know, so you, you find valuables and shit, right? And then you bring it back to the ship and you're like, oh, man, great, right? And then, you know, all of a sudden, someone falls ill. You know what I'm saying? Someone falls ill. Someone falls ill. Oh, I don't feel so good. And he infects all the others, right? And then it's like, oh, shit, there's a curse on the ship or on the treasure, right? There's a curse. And they didn't know that it was the fucking plague that wiped out the crew on the ship and that just, you know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true stories, man, true stories, right? So, you know, if you're on a ship, what do you do? What are you supposed to do when you're a captain on a ship? What do they tell you? They tell you you're supposed to scrub the deck, right? That's right, they tell you to fucking clean the fucking ship up, right? Am I right? That's the top priority on the fucking ship, to keep that fucking ship clean, right? You know what I'm saying? Scrub the deck. All this shit. Oh, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I get it, I get it, but you see how far this went, and you know, and it's all real. It's all real, and you know, for some, they telling you stories about Jews, how motherfuckers, how motherfuckers fucking burned Jews, like, you know, by the thousands. That's what they tell you. They telling you stories about Jews that burn themselves because they didn't want to get burned by someone else. They burning Jews, man. Why? Because they they said that the Jews would poison uh, poison the wells. That's what they said. They said like the Jews were responsible for the plague because the Jews were had more money than, because you pawned your shit to the Jew and the Jew didn't like fuck because people are lazy and fucking stupid. Now, when people, when you're on a ship, right, and, you know, you're a crewmate, and your captain tells you to fucking clean up the ship, I mean, it has a purpose, it has a reason, right? And if you're in New York, oops, and if you're in New York, and health inspectors go around, and, you know, they, they close down your fucking, they close down your fucking burger shop, I'm thinking about Bob's Burger right now, but, you know, they closing down your fucking burger shop, they, because it's unhygienic, yeah, kitchen nightmare because it's a because it's a kitchen nightmare. That has a fucking reason too, and it has a history. It has a fucking history, and you're supposed to acknowledge it, because we're right now we're in a recycling, we're really, we we're, we're reliving this shit. The so-called inflation, right? We're reliving it now. They telling you, they telling you that the plague has stopped progress for over 100 years. The plague has stopped progress. Now, I cannot imagine how we are supposed to progress for 100 years. I don't. I can't imagine how the world would look like. Now, they're telling you about. They telling you clean energy, right? They telling you. I don't fucking electric cars. They telling you like what else? Electric cars. Oh yeah, yeah. They telling you like you know. Uh, 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 organic food and shit like you know like uh, uh, vegetarian stuff right like you know what I mean right you know what I'm saying it, it is laying off you know the meat and stuff like that that that's how they do. yeah now you know you got like yeah think about it think about it you know if that's a good thing, right? So this is this is the kind of future they they telling you, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, I got this plant-based burger, you got plant-based milk, you know, everything is plant-based. I mean, okay, great. So this is the point. 
Now, if more and more people die, just like back in the days with the plague, this so-called future, or this so-called progress, what they're aiming for, stagnates. Because, you know, there are no workers there. They're all fucking dead. You get my point? So we're, re we're, in, we're, we're, in, we're in a recycle just right now, right? And, you know, it's... I'm going to say it again, like I said it before, because it, it, it claimingly is real and, you know, 100% true, what I say. That when everything is fucking clean, you cannot get fucking sick. If it's the ship, right? If it's your fucking kitchen, if it's your hands, if it's your ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If it's your fucking mind. You cannot get fucking sick. You see, like, the thing is, what I'm trying to say is, you know, my ancestors, they survived this shit because they knew and they accepted it that, you know, you as a human are supposed... This is like, I'm a fucking cleaner, right, momentarily. And that is like the one of the lowest jobs in our human society. One of the lowest that, me that just means that everybody has to be able to do something like that. And you p catch people nowadays and like almost nobody can do it. You get my point? So I have to think of my ancestors, right? And I don't want to disgrace my ancestors, right? That's my Aryan side. Thank you, yes. I don't want to disgrace my ancestors, right? And I can't. I fucking can't. You know, so I, I, I honor my ancestors for that. Okay, I, I want to honor my ancestors. Now, you know, you go into the new continent and what do they do, right? They, you know, the, the, these, these taxes followed their ass into the new continent, into America, right? And of course, you had also had diseases and shit. And of course, you had some kind of government there, right? Some kind of kingdom telling people, taxing people, right? And telling people what to do and, you know, giving out laws and this and that so people were, were and inspecting houses right if everything is clean and shit right and of course people didn't want it to work of course people were fucking lazy the same way they were fucking lazy in Europe right these Europeans right fucking lazy so what do they do what do they do what did they do they 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 went to Africa and got slaves to do the work for them the cleaning work right and you know picking cotton am I right yes that's right. It all in the name of preventing, you know, of not wanting to get, not wanting to do the work themselves. A, B, not wanting to pay taxes. Right, right, right. And uh, what else? C. Oh, yeah, not not wanting to fall ill. Now let's think about it. Right, you having a slave, you having a black slave. Who would have been, who was the first motherfucker to fall ill and die? It was the slave, right? Right? Am I right? I'm right. Yeah, I'm right. You know it. Now, I'm not an expert on black history in America. I gotta be honest, but it, it, it's plain and simple, right? Plain and simple. What I'm saying is so true. It's so true, right? Now, you know, if you're in New York, I, you know... This shit has a reason, man. And, you know, you gotta stick to it. Because, you know, you like I said, listen to what I say and then watch these documentaries, right? You know what I'm saying? This shit ain't over. What I'm, try what, what, what I'm trying to say is this pandemic ain't over. Even though they tone it, they play it down. This shit ain't over. What's actually happening is they pawn in your shit. You fucking dying and they pawn in your shit. That's as simple as that. They taking your shit away. When you're dead, they just waiting until you die, and then all your shit gets pawned. It gets sold. It gets thrown out. It's up for grabs. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, you gotta take care of your shit, right? You gotta take care of your property. And in order to take care of your property, you know, you gotta, you gotta realize, you gotta, you know, you gotta stick to your, to these obligations. Because you know, you gotta think when back in the days, right, when they told you that everything has to be clean, that meant that, you know, you gotta clean shit up so that, so that you don't catch the plague, that you don't spread the plague, and, you know, that 
the capital grows. If, if it's your capital or if it's the state capital that it grows because you know you're paying taxes. If you die, you can't, if you're dead, you can't fucking pay taxes. So what do they do as a compensation? They take away all your shit. And that's what they did back in the days. And that's what they're going to do now. Same thing. And you, there's nothing you can do about it. Except, you know, follow or stick to, your, stick to these obligations. What I'm... What I just said. Okay? Not only are you honoring your ancestors... Right? I'm, as a white person, I don't know if, if... As a black person, can you actually honor your ancestors by working like a slave? <laughs> Yeah. So I'm working like a slave, man. But you know what I'm saying? But you know, I do it for the money. It's not like I'm I'm not like if I wouldn't get paid for what I'm doing, I'd say fuck you. I'm not I'm not going to work. I'm no slave, but I'm working like a slave. I'm gonna tell you because I want the money. I need the money. And yes, the job, this cleaning up shit, is exhausting. But it has a purpose, right? It has a purpose, especially now in times of the pandemic. And when you know when a colleague is sick, right? Right now, for example, if a colleague is sick, and you know I. I uh, I jump in for the colleague, right? And I see like you know what how the colleague cleans up stuff, and it's not it's not really clean. And you know I I I basically fight my way through that filth and that shit, that 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 that, that filthy filth, and try to clean stuff up. And you know I see progress again. Then you know then I know what my job is good for. Namely, to keep stuff clean and preventing diseases and from spreading, or you know, from uh, or how do you say, infections from happening, right? Preventing infections. I mean, that's what my job is fucking good for. And when I see I'm making real progress because some other fuckface fuckhead is just too fucking stupid and lazy to do it, right? Or like too fucking unconcentrated and like blah, blah, blah. Right, and I'm see I'm making progress again. You know that's that makes my time worthwhile. That makes me feel good. See, this is how I honor my ancestors. Right? I'm saying, look at me, man. I'm preventing this stupid shit from happening again. Right? Look at me, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. And you know, uh, if you're a New Yorker, if you're a real New Yorker, right? And you know your New York history, you know all that stupid shit with diseases, all these fucking diseases and infections. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I, you know what I expect. You fucking know what I expect, man. You see, you're not supposed to stagnate. Is what I'm talking about. Right? You're not allowed to fucking stagnate. Okay, this is the point. You're not allowed to fucking stagnate. And if you got to move to another state, you know what I'm saying, to keep that progress from going, well then, that that's the point, man. You gotta, you're not allowed to stagnate. Okay, especially in times of these fuck. Especially in th these fucking disease times, you as a New Yorker should know what to do. Most like best of all, really best of all. Uh, and you should like you know. You should help other states understand, and you know. You should help other states, the other states. You know what I'm saying? The same way I'm trying to, you know convince you that that this is true what I'm saying right you can't like you know you can't like you can't let someone like Donald Trump you know take over everything you know what I mean you can't let people like that where's the freedom where's your freedom man fucking fight fucking fight for your freedom man you're supposed to fucking fight for your freedom man that's what American is all about so we fucking fight we fucking fight for our for for our right to hold our own fucking capital. We fucking fight to to survive. We fucking fight to live. We don't live to fight. We fucking fight to live. Okay? Don't get that fucking twisted. We fucking fight to live. And that's when we're free. That's when I'm free. That's how I honor my ancestors. Now, where's this guy? Uh, I can't believe this, man. Where is he?
All right. I can't believe this. Where is this guy? Ah. What are we doing here, Dexy? Monumental Records are longtime clients of Morgan Yates and Co. I thought we'd come show. All right, he's not support. here. He's a blood-sucking leech. He's like evil in Hi. What business is this up yours? Where I'm from? Friendo. I didn't mean anything, man. Didn't mean nothing. Is that what you're asking me? Is there anything wrong with anything? You already asked me that. <sighs> you don't know what you're talking about, do you? I said, you don't know what you're talking about. What time do you go to bed? You're a bit deaf, aren't you? I said, what time do you go to bed? I could come back then. Yeah, you what said that. The damnedest thing, to be sure, like a golden age. You live in the back of this house. You lived here all your life. You married into it. No, there's no way to put it. That's the way it is. What's the most you ever lost in a coin toss? The most you ever lost in a coin toss. It's like you invented that whole glass game trend. You must be so hydrated. So much. Motherfucker. your complexion, Michelle. That's sweet of you to say. Hey there, Wrangler. Wrangler was in league with Grey. She's responsible for killing how many of our people? Fuck. How could she be a heroine? He aimed for the wrong woman, man. And for the wrong person. Would be Romeo, an established killer. Don't hold your breath. I always feel guilty showing this. <laughs> that went. That was fucked up, man. I didn't want to hit the woman. Target eliminated. Expect the client's payment and a tasteful thank you card shortly. Shame about your boy Leandro What? Hey, por qué no? Come on, you assholes, move.
God damn it, I was fucked up. I hit the woman, man. I didn't... Like, he wasn't supposed to aim for the non-target. Of course. <laughs> Fuck you, man. That was fucked up. That was fucked up, man. <laughs> oh, gringo. Like, really, man. They tried to fuck with me again, man. They did not want me to to finish this. Fuck you guys, man. That was fucked up. Oh, I got a blood money suit. Stylish black two-button suit with a delicate pin, strip shirt, and a tie. That's it? Alright. Alright, good. You see? That's what I was talking about. Something else? Oh yeah! I wanted to talk about this. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Black. Thank you, yes. Alright, we got this guy. What else we got here? F free the stairs, broken... This we still got this Christmas shit? The gun runners uh, reach for this guy. Let's try this. What I gotta do? Eliminate. Eliminate. Optional. Target. Target. Okay. I got the absolution suit? Okay. Do we want the absolution suit? I'm taking the short baller, definitely. Uh. What else we got? Blood money. That looks cool. Let's take this one. So yeah, I was looking, scrolling through the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft. Yeah, through the Microsoft store. And they actually had some, like, suggestion. And it was called Black Picks, right? So it was basically, like, black people? Or, well, I say, black Americans? S uh, mostly, or specifically, kids? Black kids in America? Like, American black kids? You know, the games they basically liked was, a suggest was suggested to me, man. Or better say, was like was a suggestion to to look at. So I clicked it, like even movies, right? So I was interested in the games. Like I wanted to see, like, what black kids like to play. And man, I gotta think. When I saw it, I had to think of my brother, my little brother, right? My younger brother, I mean. I had to think of my younger brother and, you know, how he grew up and it's like this non-violent... How do I call it, right? Like this goody, goody, non-violent and, you know, like this... I don't fucking know, man. Like this... You know, be at your best or, you know, do what you're told kind of like game pick, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like... You know what I mean, right? It's like this... Yes, the, you know, black, it's like, this is what, you know, it's like, this is what white people expect you to be like when you're black in America, right? Either, you know, you know what I'm saying, you can be like the best you want, you could be like the best, and you know, they'd still, they'd still tell you what to do, basically, right, and what to pick, 
and that was kind of like this. I, I was. I wouldn't say it was like racist. I. I. I just say it was like. It's to me. It was underdeveloped, right? Because me, if I, you know, I'm half black and I'm half white, and you know, I fucking pick what I fucking want to pick. I'm. I'm not gonna let myself get, you know, told what to pick, and this is what it actually represented. Is like these parents of black kids telling them what to pick and what to do in the name of the white man i was like that's fucked up that is so fucked up and stale you know what i'm saying that is so fucked up and stale and stagnated i mean that's not me you know if i listen to my black side you know like my black side says do what you want to do <laughs> that's right baby yeah that's right my yeah you know what I'm saying? Like, my black side says, do what you want to do. You look at my brother, my older brother, right? The same, his black side, right? He's also half black, half white. And what is his fucking black side? His, yeah, his fucking black side took over him. He says, do what you want to do. Like, I want to do nothing. I want to sleep all day, right? I want to let loose of all obligation. Yeah, that's right. I want to think what I want to think. Right? I wanna... He, he making up stories, man, the way, even though it's not real. That's how... Yeah. That's how black he is. That's how his black side took over. That's... He does what he wants to do. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing you can d d d say against it. You know what I'm saying? You can't make him... You can't make him over. You know what I'm saying? The same way you can't make me over. Because I respect that. You know what I'm saying? You, that's... You gotta respect that. If a black man does... What he wants to do, you know, you're supposed to respect that. Because, you know, a white guy does what he wants to do, too. I mean, that's that's the reflection, right? I mean, that is just a fucking reflection. A white guy, you know, it's like this, right? White guy telling you what to do. So, you know, you, for example, you know, like, you're you're a kid, you're a black kid, and, you know, you, you know it, man, you know it. You got, like, I, 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 you know, you, you know it. You know, white guy telling you what to do somehow, right? You got this, you know, the white man telling you what to do. And then you want to tell some white guy what to do. And what happens is, you know, they, yeah, you know you know what happens, right? When you're a kid and you tell other white kids what to do. They start calling names at you, man. I just, I just, I just heard it recently when I was cleaning up in school, right? You know what I'm saying? Suddenly all these racial slurs come up. When black, when a black kid tells a white kid what to do, you know, saying all, all of a sudden these red. I had it one time. When I was a kid, I told you know my friends what to do, and really, and then he got mad. Or let's say he got, he got, uh, he he got. Uh, how do you say? Um, he was offended, right, by it, that I that I was telling him what to do. He got offended, and he called me like a bimbo nigger, right? And I didn't know what the fuck that is. I didn't know what the fuck that meant. So I had to ask, you know, I had to ask people, my brother, for example, what it actually means. My brother's right. And he told me what it meant. And I said, like, you know, and then it was like, you know, I was, con I, was I, had a, I had some kind of confrontation inside of me because I was half black, and because I'm half black and half white. So I had basically my white side explaining to me explaining to my black side what that actually meant and how that it was an insult and it was aimed towards my black side and then i was torn up i remember now it's coming back i was fucking torn up i was like ah right so my black side was yelling and screaming and wanted revenge and my white side was like okay <laughs> Let's, you'll get your revenge, right? So I'm, I'm back. I'm, I got you, right? Like I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like you. Where was I? These black picks, yeah. So you, those are the video games. So it's ma mostly like, you know, something their parents tell them to pick, or it's something you know out of frustration that you know a game that includes like a black protagonist, basically, right? And that's like a pick out of it's like some kind of frustration pick. Like oh, it was it's a sad. Those are not I would those aren't good games. 
I gotta be wrong, those aren't good games. Did they show Afro Samurai? I don't I don't even think they, they showed Afro Samurai, man. You know what I'm this is this is you see, because no parent would say, Oh, I want you to play Afro Samurai, son. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And like no guy I don't know. I guess no guy would be badass enough to want to play they're like they're totally frustrated. To me, to me, that was like, it was so frustrating. Like, if black, if black people, like, I'm sorry, man, it's boring. Fuck Mortal Kombat, you know, you know, like, Mortal Kombat is like, how do I put it, man? I'm not, talk, I don't, I don't want to talk bad about Mortal Kombat, but, you know, Mortal Kombat is a beat-em-up. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a one versus one beat-em-up game, right? It's not like, it's not like a story related game right it's not like a character building game right a, a game that's supposed to build your character it's just something you know when you get insulted you play Mortal Kombat and you know you you know what I mean right it, yeah okay you get my you get my point right so that was like this black pick bullshit and I was like man that is fucking stagnated so if I had kids and, you know, they would pick video games like that, I'd say, fuck those video games, man. You're not playing video games anymore. We're, we're, you're going to play, I don't know, you're going to play an instrument. And, you know, I'm going to, yeah, if, 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 I, if I'm supposed to tell you what to fucking do, well, then you're going to fucking play an instrument and you're going to be a jazz musician like, like your granddad, like your great-granddad, you know what I'm saying? Like your great-granddad. You're going to be a fucking jazz musician, man. You're going to learn how to, that's right, baby. You're gonna, you're gonna learn how to grease your fucking hair. You're gonna learn how to comb it. Then you're gonna learn how to wash it. Then you're gonna learn how to fucking dry your hair. Right? And you're gonna learn how to fucking grease it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want that fucking nappy ass afro... You know, I don't want that nappy hair shit. And you're gonna learn how to shave your fucking face. You know what I'm saying? And then you're gonna learn how to play that fucking instrument. And if you're finished with that, you're gonna play another instrument. You know what I'm saying? And then you're going to learn how to tap dance. Step, how you call it? Is that how you call it? Tap dancing? You're going to learn how to tap dance. Just like your great grandfather. You know what I'm saying? Bullshit. That stupid shit there, man. It's, that, they call that black picks. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather have my child dance. I'd rather have him break dance. Instead of you break, then you do him break dance. Fuck those boring ass, stagnated, sad, pathetic. Picks. Those aren't even great games. You know, those aren't. You know, those aren't character building games. It's actually more character destroying. And this is what America finds good in black people that they, you know, that they get their characters destroyed, that they destroy their, their image. Their image gets destroyed instead of built up. The image gets destroyed, and the white man's like, oh yeah, finally. So now I watch in the news, man. They talking about this NFL. You know, the same thing, right? You got this NFL coach, he's black, and he, like, eh, and they want to destroy his character, right? And he, he's offended by it because it's a bunch of white guys, and they own the NFL, right? And they're all white. And they tell him, the black man, to, to you know, that, that his character, they, they want to damage his character. And he's like, nah, that's not me. And they basically tell him, you know, this is... <sighs> So you got offended by it, right? This it's a sad pick, basically, right? It's a they they basically that's the thing, right? The guy doesn't want to be a sad pick. No matter what you say and no matter what you do, the guy does not want to be a sad fucking pick. Okay, and they but they tell him to be a sad fucking pick. The same way with they show him these sad fucking black picks video games, and movies, and that's just that's just stagnant. That's it's not good. It's, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay? I don't like it. It's just so stereotypical... It's just so stereotypical lazy. Right? There, it's not creative. It's lazy. You get my point? Really, it's lazy. It's not creative. It's, it's lazy. It's like, oh yeah, I'm... You got this guy, and instead of building his character up, Right? So that the guy can actually tap dance. That's right, baby. You know? Comb his hair. <laughs> Wear a mustache. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
you know what I mean, man. You're saying tap dance. They say that play an instrument. So instead of building up a character, that's that's great, and that's 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 fun and that's nice and enjoyable. You want to break a character that's just sad and pathetic and you know like how do you say schizophrenic? Thank you. Yes, and, and maybe homicidal. Yeah, and, and you know like. What did I say? <sighs> because, you know, you lack the effort to build... Because it's too much effort for you to build up the character. I mean, you don't know how to build a character. Right? You only... The only thing you know is how to destroy a character. Right? And, you know, I could say, like, okay, the reason why is because you're fucking white. I don't fucking know. But, you know, it seems to be that way. Right? Imagine a machine, man. Like... That, really, either you're either you're like a, a dumb machine, right, or you're like a dumb white guy, or like you're you're a dumb white machine. Let's put it like that. You're a dumb white machine that, that doesn't know how to build a black character. <laughs> you asking an AI, man? You know what I'm saying? You got these white guys. They program in the uh, them them AIs, right? You know what I'm saying? They the, the AI you ask an AI about a black man. You know what I'm saying? Ask, no, no, wait. Ask the AI about a black American man. You know what I'm saying? How to build a black American character. You know what I mean? What, what, what would come out? Would it come, you know, would it say like, you know, oh yeah, he's supposed to play an instrument. He's supposed to be highly intelligent. He's supposed to, you know, be highly intelligent. He's supposed to be highly athletic. You know what I'm saying? Or is it like, oh, he's supposed to like be really, really sad. And he's supposed to do as he's told, and he's supposed to obey, and, I don't know, like, he's supposed to... He's supposed to yell around all the time, and he's supposed to, I don't know, like, give up? Or, you know what I mean. Or you know what I mean. So it's not like... It's not like, you know, you're building the character so that the character can, you know, perform. It's more like you're breaking the character so that the character lacks performance. And, I mean, where's the sense in that? Just so that you can laugh about it while not performing, either. And that is what I mean, that is pathetic. That is, that is so pathetic. That is stagnation. That is stagnating. That is so fucking stagnating. And now you have the pandemic hitting, right? And I don't know, either it's either the colors are showing now, right? Because of the pandemic hitting so hard that the colors are showing. You know, those are the colors right now, right? Or it's just like... Or that is just the way you fucking are, man. It's just fucking sad. That is so fucking sad. I gotta tell you, man, it is so fucking sad. Now, you know, since I'm black, half black and half white, I can only speak in that sense. Now, if I were Hispanic, Right? If I had, you know, parents that were Hispanic or, you know, my grandfather was Hispanic, I don't fucking know, man. Maybe I would think other... Maybe, maybe I'd say, like, fuck all that shit, right? I don't give a fuck. Could be, right? Or if I were Chinese, half Chinese, I'd say, fuck those guys. Not my problem. I'm... I'm... Holy shit, what was that? I'd say fuck that, not my problem, right? <sighs> it's just, yeah, you don't hear other people having these issues, right? Being so schizophrenic, or like, you know, their characters being targeted and, you know, just, you know, targeted for destruction. Except like the black man, or the black child. It's like that, the black child, it's not the black man, but the black child, right? Black child, the character of the black child being destroyed, right? They won't destroy it, and you know, which leads to, to lack of performance. I mean, I bet, yeah, like, honoring your ancestors, right? I mean, think about it, honoring your ancestors, right? So, yeah, they're teaching you about black history, right, in America, and, uh, 
and there's like yes, Africa and yeah, in Africa we were kings and blah and listen to that shit, man. Like, I don't have nothing to do with that. I gotta be honest, right? The only thing I have from you know from Africa is you know my tribe. You know what I'm saying? And you know it's like it's like it's the same with, with white people, right? It's, there's a clan, right? And if you know and if you if there isn't a clan, then you gotta build a clan. You know what I'm saying? What what does that have to do with Africa? You know what I'm saying? You go to Africa, they they they, they tell you that, right? <laughs> As you said, it's all about it's all about the clan. So you're not part of the clan just because you're black. Okay? You're not part of the clan just because you're black. Okay? Face it. So, you know, you're an American, you're a real black American, right? And, you know, your ancestors either fought in a war, they were picking cotton, they were playing music, playing instruments, they were dancing their ass off, you know what I'm saying, they were performing. And, you know, they were performing in the highest manner in everything they were doing, you know what I'm saying, and the reason why is because they were forced to perform in some sense, or they forced themselves because they wanted to be for, for recognition or for freedom right or, or even to feel free you know what I'm saying that doesn't you know that's just the way it is and you know being white and American and thinking of your ancestors I mean it's the same thing right it's the same thing it's a clan thing you got these different states Right, you got these different states in the United States and the different kinds of white people. Let's be honest, right? Uh, someone from New York is not like someone from California. Even though they're both white, they're not the same, right? You get my point? This is the thing. So, you know, where does the black man fit in between all that? Between all these states? Why do they all have a... You know, because, yeah, they thinking like, yeah. I mean, maybe it is so. But, you know, maybe it's not so. Maybe they're just destroying the character. Maybe they just like to destroy the character instead of building it, and that's why black people are all the same to them. Like, you know, a bunch of destroyed characters, even though every human is kind of like an individual, right? I'd say, like, someone in New York, a black man in New York is different than a black man in, in, in you know what I'm saying? A blood is not a crip, for example, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a blood is definitely not a crip. And, for example, right, just for example. So I don't know why, you see, this is what I mean, like, with de destroying a character, wanting to do that, or, you know, destroying the black child's character, instead of, like, you know, trying to build it up, so that it actually can perform, perform, the way, you know, the way we used to have it in times of war, in times of need, you know what I'm saying, you used to build black characters. <sighs> I don't get it, man. I don't get it. There's no respect. No respect, man. No respect for each other, man. That's that's true, man. No respect for each other. I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. Why why hold on? Why not hold on to something that's great? Why not just hold on to it? To something that is great. Just hold on to it. Just hold on to it and keep it instead of like throwing it away. Letting it go to waste. You know, letting it go down the gutter. Letting it wash washing it away. Why do that? It's a loss. It's nothing more but it's nothing more than a loss. It's nothing more than a loss. It's no win. It's a loss. You know what I mean? Why do something like that? Because some guy told you? Some other white guy? Why do something like that? Don't you get it? That's 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 not what we call the United States. That's just, you know, yeah, they called state of fear. Let's try to play this shit. I mean, I know I'm going off, but you know, this was the black pick Microsoft store, right? This popular picks by blacks. I was like, fuck that shit, man. What is that? What are you trying to tell me that I'm not black? <sighs> so then I was like thinking, like, yeah, maybe they should make more video games that have more story in involving black characters. Right? Maybe they should make a game where a black character simply, you know, where the character, black character develops itself 
instead of like presenting you a black character that is already finished and this and that, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, right? So then I, they was talking about Whoopi Goldberg and this is the thing, right? This Whoopi Goldberg issue. I mean... Oh yeah, I gotta kill guys. The Whoopi Goldberg issue, right? That she got censored from, from the channel and shit. I mean, who wanted that? Who wanted her to get censored? I mean, I mean, doesn't she seem like a nice person? You know? But... Welcome to the Baj Al Ghazali. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. It's good to see you. How lovely to see so many friendly and familiar faces here today. Welcome. On behalf of His Royal Highness Omar Al Ghazali and I, I am from the less privileged side of the respectable Al Ghazali family. But with a small loan from my father, I soon built up a construction empire that was worthy of the great Al Ghazali legacy. Hey, good to see you. I would like to thank my cousin. Look, it's just a precaution. I've been personally invited by the Royal Highness Omar Al Ghazali. I should have clear. The name is Zayn. But most important, sir, I understand. This you can't enter without being searched for. All the pretty swanky place. The task building. What was I? Oh yeah, Whoopi Goldberg. So yeah, it's uh... I mean, doesn't she seem like a nice person? You know what I mean? No? Yes? Yes, no? You know, I remember Whoopi Goldberg from movies like, I don't know, like Fatal Beauty. And uh... Oh, no, you and, uh Made in America, yeah, I remember that movie. Oh man. You know, how I was like, you know, locked basically with my mom here in Germany and I was missing like my dad and, you know, American food and American kids, like American girls, right? And like, I don't know, American food and American language and American cartoon series and American movies and they bring like this movie made in America. So I had to go into the German cinema and watch the movie in German, right? You know, with Will Smith and shit and I don't know man and then you know it was about this girl and her dad was white you know and the mother was black and I was like oh I had and then I was trying to identify myself so this is what yeah and Whoopi Goldberg was like the mother and uh, he's always this issue right and you know what I mean right so it's like I don't know something torn up inside right it's basically like the figure that is a conscious figure, always the conscious figure, right? The figure that is conscious and the figure that tries to protect something, right? That basically tries to protect the, the, uh, how do you say, the ego, right? The per the, yeah, the conscience that tries to protect the ego. You know, for example, me watching the movie in made in america right with whoopi goldberg 
as a kid where it's about this girl who is half black and half white you know what i mean and she having like i don't know she she finding out that her father is white and then she starts to have these issues right she's torn she's kind of like feels torn apart right and uh you know I'm, I'm sitting there in the movie in the cinema and my mom next to me right my mom's white you know and and then you watch in Whoopi Goldberg in the movie and you know she's black and you know she having this protective role simply right and I'm looking at my mom and it's the same thing she having this protective role this conscious right this conscious protective role you know to to protect your ego you 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 your you right your ego so that was like you know sitting there like yeah i'm half black and i'm half white and this is my mom and you know i'm like i don't want i want to see my dad i want to see my dad and you know like and then the other voice is like yeah but this is your mom and your mom is here to protect you right your mom is here to protect you your mom you know because dad always tells you what to do right mama doesn't tell you what to do does she you're right mama doesn't tell me what to do you know what i'm saying dad you know f forces you to do things right doesn't he yes you're right mama doesn't force you to do shit right you're right so mama actually protects your ego doesn't she yeah you're right so mama isn't bad right yeah you're right mama isn't bad you know and same with Whoopi Goldberg in the movie right I mean is she a bad person is she just because some I'm sorry but just because some Jews said <laughs> You get my point, right? You know what I'm saying? Is is she a bad person, right? Is is that reason you know, is 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 that let's say slip out that 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 trip that you know, is that mess up? That's that mess up. You know, is is that enough to to throw her off of off that show? I mean, you know. I mean, is she a bad person, right? Is she a that enough bad person so that you say, fuck it, throw her off? You know what I mean? Is she a monster? Is she the monster here, right? Was she, like, yelling or, you know, screaming around, like, you know, oh, the Holocaust, blah, blah, blah. Was she yelling, screaming? You know? Was she kind of, like, aggravating in some form of way? Was she aggravated, I mean, in some form of way? No. No. So, you know, like, I don't know, man, like, I, I, I think that's, that's, that's so, this is what I mean, that, to me, it's hurting to see, like, a woman of that age, and, you know, of that consciousness being, you know, like, dumped like that, after all she done and did, you know what I mean, and, 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 I don't know, man. So I don't think like Whoopi Goldberg is a bad person. If you know, just because some white guy says it, I mean, he's not. He doesn't know how it feels to be black, does he? Does he? No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. So you have like these mediums, and you have like these channels trying to tell the white man how the black man or like a black, you know, how a black woman feels. You know what I mean? And you know what a what what. what what they care about I don't know or how they care about not maybe not what they care about how they care about stuff you know what I'm saying and you know and you know what that means you know translated to 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 how you protect things you being white and shit right so you know I can tell you like she's not a bad person and I don't know man you know normally you throw off bad people from you know, from shows, people who, who do bad things and people who actually say bad things. So what I'm trying to say is what she said wasn't bad. What she said wasn't, wasn't, what she said didn't make sense, maybe. But what she said wasn't bad. Was it? This is the thing, man. Just because some Jew said so, yeah. No, throw off the channel, I can't let you stand. Like, yeah, and me talking about the plague, man. And how, like, I don't know, millions of Jews got burned. Because people accused them of poisoning the wells and shit. The plague. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? And the Jew, man, I mean, who cleaned the house? Who cleaned the house? It was the kids, right? They told them kids to clean up the house. You know what I'm saying? They didn't clean, you know, the man didn't clean up the house, even though Jews weren't allowed to do any, any work. They weren't allowed to do any work except financing. You know what I'm saying? Jew didn't clean his house. He let his kids clean the house. You know what I'm saying? He was taking care of the money. He was taking care of the money bags. That's right. That's right, man. That's right. Guy, you know, I'm, I'm a Jew. You know, I'm not allowed to work except with money. So then kids handled it, right? <laughs> kids cleaning it up. So, he, so then he had a lot of kids, right, to clean up shit. Simple as that. How convenient, right? And then you have, like, you know, the other people seeing it, man. Like, oh, those, all these Jews, man. And they got money, right? Oh, something they write. Something they write with the Jew, right? And they burned them all, man. How can you burn so many Jews? I mean, yeah. It was possible because so many Jews were actually there, right? That's how it was possible to burn so many. Simple as that. You know what I'm saying? And how was it possible if they're not, if they're only to, if they're only allowed to do the money work? You know, the finance, finance working. You know what I mean? How is that possible? See, that's the thing. The guy thought, like, if I have a lot of kids, they can do the cleanup work for me. Simple as that. So then he doing the finance working, right? Some people, lazy and dumb people, pawning their stuff to pay these goddamn taxes, right? And he getting more and more position that he can sell back to the government, the Jew, right? What a conspiracy, right? But yeah, that's how it happened, right? And the people, right? The people, the poor people, they, they, they freaked out. They freaked out. And that was the end of the story. Again, that was the end of the story. So, you know, like I said, man, I'm half, I'm like, you know, part of me is Aryan, and I don't fucking need slaves to do the fucking work, man. I do the fucking work myself. <laughs> I'm actually that strong, right? I'm actually that strong, and... Yeah, I'm actually that strong and, you know, like, to do the fucking work myself, really. And if it's finance work, like, you know, fuck it. Fuck it. So anyway, I don't want to be, you know, anti-Semitic, however you call it, right? But, you know, being too convenient doesn't make you, like, you know, doesn't make you, like, the is it doesn't make you the fittest, Okay? It doesn't make you the fittest of, for survival. Being too convenient. And thinking too convenient definitely doesn't make you the fittest for survival. You gotta acknowledge that. You have to acknowledge that. You gotta respect that. Okay, and that is the truth. I'm not... That is the truth. That is what I'm trying to tell you. But that is what I'm trying to say. Right? And that goes like to... That goes to all... That goes out to everybody. That goes out to everybody. Because many, many people, especially women and Jews, <laughs> they think very convenient. They have very, very convenient thoughts. And, you know, they want to have life as convenient as possible. You know what I'm saying? And part of that is, you know, having other people do the work for them. For, yeah, that is just part of it. But that doesn't make you fit for survival. You know, it's times like these that prove it. It's times like these that prove it. I was just watching, I'm watching advertisement and commercials and it was about banking, right? So you have like debt and you have a debt interest like 11%. And if you switch over to this bank, you're given like these negative interests, right? They're giving you these negative interests. So you, oh my God, a stupid shit again, like in 2008 uh, 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 economy crisis, right? With this banking bullshit, right? With this one bank offering you because... Ah, God. You know what I'm saying? It's not... Like, really, they all speculating, right? They all speculating, and it comes out to, an, to a big mess. It all, it all leads out to governments having to lend the money, uh, to borrow money again, right? I mean, that's how it all leads out to again, right? You know what I'm saying? You're... you're you got this inflation... You know, you got this inflation, you have, uh, you have payments rising, right? You know what I'm saying? Payments rising, 
costs rising and then these payments rising and then people speculating on these payments right people making debts on these costs and then people speculating on these on these on these high salaries right on these salary rising on the salary risings people speculating on that for example i don't know how do i put it man for example they're just speculating on it I mean, when will these, let's say, when will, will, it, will it stop? When will these salaries drop again? You know what I mean? When, when will it drop again? I mean, that's a, good, that's a good question. See, people speculating on that. You know what I'm saying? They're speculating on that. They're not speculating on something like, for example, I don't know, let's say the Russians invading Ukraine. They're actually not, they actually not speculating on it. You know what I'm saying? They, they're not speculating on it. And you know what? They're working on it. That the Russians don't invade the Ukraine so that's how it works right <laughs> you know what I mean so they, they yeah so they speculating on everything that goes you know f that that doesn't go against their interest they speculating on that okay even though there is a negative chance that you know things go against their interest there isn't there is a chance right there is a negative ch there is a chance how do you put it there's a negative chance that things go against their interests right so the thing is like you know if you have debt you fucking pay it off okay and it doesn't matter how much interest there is you fucking pay it off for me for example I have a car loan yeah people some people say that don't be stupid right I mean where's the honesty in all of that right I have debt by a you know a debt at a bank because I don't know I <clears throat> I borrowed money from the bank right and then I can't pay it back so I have debt so you telling me it's it's not it's so you know the, the smart thing to do is to work off the debt okay so you telling me that you know I'm supposed to go to a different bank and tell the other bank that the, that the other bank is uh, taking over my debt. You're telling me that's smart? I mean, where's, you know what I'm saying? That's smart? No, that's fishy. That is fucking fishy. That is fucking fishy if I ever knew it. Right? And then your shit getting pawned. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you see what I mean? The thing is, like, you know, uh, I, don't, I do the fucking job myself. And if I have debt, I pick, I pay off the fucking debt myself. Okay, you know what I'm saying? These are the things, man. These are the things. These are the, these are these differences. Right? These are these differences. So, like I said, man, convenient thinking, convenient. That doesn't make you fit for survival. And history always, history always shows you that is true. What I'm saying, right? Being so convenient doesn't make you fit for survival. So when the time actually comes you won't survive you won't survive the way you are right you will not survive the way you are man I almost ran over a kid last time two days ago I think it was two three days ago I almost ran over a kid with my car that was whoa that was whoa man it happened like I was in bed and then, like, I had to get up. So I brushed my teeth, hopped into the shower, right, grabbed my energy drinks, got into the car, and drove. And then I wanted to drive through the town because, you know, there, the, the, the other street I normally drive through was, you know, there were too many cars parking there. And it was just inconvenient, yeah, it was inconvenient for me, right? So I thought, like, I'm taking a convenient route driving through town, or dri driving through the town, right? On the main street, on the main road, and then, you know, get it going to work. So, you know, I'm driving down the street, you know, and, you know, there's another street. At the end of the street I drive, there is basically a other street cutting the street I was in. So I look to my left, 
and I see the car. I see a car driving, right? I was like, okay, um, I can drive first. So I look to my right, I see no fucking car. So then I turn right, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, right, at the far right, I see a, like a three, four-year-old child on a bike. And I'm about to hit the child with my right with my with the, with the right side with my right light you know what I'm saying with my right light I'm about to hit the I'm about basically the my my front bumper is about to hit the fucking face of the child right you know what I'm saying and the child is on this bike child has having like this light green jacket on a light green bike with a yellow helmet on right and these blue eyes right blonde hair and blue eyes <laughs> the child making I'm like you know I was like Really, I was like stopping. I wanted to turn right, and I, I'm turning right, right. I'm turning right, and then I'm looking with my right eye. I'm looking like, oh my god, I see these blue eyes, man. That was the only thing I actually saw from the kid because the child was riding this green bike, and next to the child was like, you know, grass, and it was green, right? And I was like, and then I seen these blue eyes, man, and these eyes looking at me, right? Like, and I was like, oh my god, a child. And I'm about to run into it, man! And the child on the bike basically driving into me. You know what I'm saying? This three, four year old child on a bike. No parents inside, just a child, right? And then it was like. I was like, oh my god, I'm about to hit the child. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, please, God, no. Right? And then I have this car on the left driving right and I was like what do I do what do I do and then I was like no right? my voice like in my inner voice was like screaming no and then I swerved to the left right completely like Voof. you know I was about I was driving like you know five miles per hour right five miles per hour or something but it was enough to you know hit the child right and I didn't want to do it and a child was looking at me like oh my god you know if, you know the child was driving its bike and it was hiding from me and it was on the left side driving on the left side even though children children at that age are supposed to ride their bikes on the sidewalk now the sidewalk was on the other side of the street the child was on the left side driving in my direction right riding in my direction so completely wrong and no parent in sight right no parent in sight it's just me and the child right and the child looking at me with his Big, with these big blue eyes and you see like the fear in the child the, this, this helplessness right this cluelessness like I don't know what to do right I'm just riding my bike nobody told me you know how to how to you know ride the bike on the street nobody told me that I'm completely clueless right those were those were the looks of the child and I was like actually like, I feel you I know how it is I know how it feels to be left alone and helpless because you know I grew up without a father you know what I'm saying I yeah I know how it is to be alone out in the streets you know and I was like please God no right I don't deserve this and this child definitely doesn't deserve to be hit by my car right <laughs> I was like, no. and I don't know if it was because I had a four-wheel because I have a four-wheel drive right but I actually, the car was evading the child so swiftly, you know, the, the, the distance between me and the child was like, how much was it? I think it was, uh, wait a minute, it was 1.1 1 .1 feet, the distance, right? One, wait a minute, 1.2, I think it was 1.2, 1.2 feet, 1.2 feet, the distance, right? between my my bumper and the fucking child's face 1.2 feet and then with my four-wheel drive I was like Woof. you know what I'm saying swerving into the left man and luckily you know there was no car coming you know again towards me you know what I'm saying because I was, that was my luck but I was like fuck it I'd rather crash into a car than crash into the child that's when I said fuck it and you know, the thing was like, like eight months ago or something, I had a dream. There was a vision, man. And I, in that vision, I actually hit the child. I hit the fucking face of the child. And then I thought like my career 
and my life is over right that's when I thought like my career my life is over and I'm I then I thought like I'm gonna lose my car I'm gonna lose my driver's license I'm gonna lose my job right I'm gonna have to go to court I'm gonna lose a lot of money right and you know but th th it, then it didn't happen and the reason and this is what I'm trying to say right so you have a vision about bad things happening right and then they actually the, you know the, the scenario actually happens and you know the reason why I didn't hit the child right even though I had this vision that I was gonna hit the child the same way in that dream right with the bumper in the face and it was the same child the reason why I didn't hit the child was because of the grace of God and only only because of the grace of God because you know if you have a vision that bad things are gonna happen to you you know they're gonna happen to you because you are the way you are and you do the things the way you do it the way you want to do it basically right really now you know the reason maybe why God you know saved my ass again is because you know I I I how do I say because you know I clean up stuff you know what I'm saying because I, I just clean up stuff very good and very efficiently you know I'm helping I'm kinda like helping people you know stay healthy in that sense right I keep you know I I care about people I actually do I care about people so much you know that how do I put it I care about I care about keeping people you know healthy I care about you know I'm not, I'm not saying like I care about helping people because that would be wrong but you know I work so my, my I work the reason why I work is to basically help people stay healthy and you know stay alive that is the reason I go I have a job that is the reason I go you know to work that is the reason you know the it's not like you know if how I put it so the reason why I work so hard that is the point right the reason why I work so hard is to keep other people healthy right and you know alive that is the reason why I work so hard it's not because you know if I would get, you know I get paid anyway right you know what I'm saying and you know there's nobody there surveilling me right I can like you know do what actually I can ever actually do whatever I want there's nobody you know in my face it's just me and you know the mop and no one there and the key I got the keys I can go whenever I want I can report in sick oh I'm I don't want to go to work oh doctor please give me some kind of prescription and this and that right I, I could do that but I don't because you know I go to work because you know I, I work so hard because you know I that I just I just help people you know stay healthy so you know I didn't want to run over the child and, you know even if I were at war I would never want to run over a fucking child I mean that is that that sh that showed it to me you know you see me play video games and I kill people with guns I kill unarmed people and this and that and you never see me, yeah you know you never actually play a video game where you kill children do you you actually don't and you never see it right and you know maybe that's good right because you know I killing kids I mean that's about that's about it man I mean if you in if you like killing kids or if you like running over kids with a car I mean if it if it doesn't bother you right I mean think about it if that doesn't bother you man you gotta be so fucked up on drugs Really, that I mean, that you gotta be so fucked up on drugs or so broke ass that it doesn't bother you. It's like I don't, they can't, they can't get anything from me, right? I'm, I, I don't have anything. I don't have no money, right? Nothing. 
So I don't. So I'm. I'm sorry that I ran over the child, but fuck it, right? I don't have anything. You can't get anything out of me, right? Too bad, right? Like you know. So you know, God saved my ass, right? And I, I, I actually owe God now. Yes, right. I'm in debt. <laughs> fuck you, man. Yeah, I'm actually in debt, and you know I gotta realize it. Right, I have to realize it. Actually, I have to realize it. And I have to acknowledge it that you know I owe God. God did me a huge favor, and I actually asked for it. Right. Sometimes God does me a favor, and I don't even ask for it. Right. That's just because God wants to protect me. But this time, you know, because I had the vision, and because it actually was supposed to, kind of like supposed to happen, but God, you know, stepped in. Even though you know some kind of interest conflict of interest but you know I owe God I owe God now right God I owe God something and I don't know how to repay it I don't know how to repay the fucking favor but to talk even more passionately about you know how God intends you know things to be or let's say how God intends I'm being honest, man, how God intends, you know, how God sees things, basically, right? To describe, actually, how God sees things. You know, me, for example, or other people, right? Other people, normal, common people, even the child I was talking about, right? How God saw the child. I thought, like, it was, this was some kind of acting or something going on, right? I thought the child was, was sent by God. You know what I'm saying? After that, because I was, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, how can this be, man? First they're having this dream about the child, and then I'm seeing the child, and I'm actually almost hitting the child, right? So if, if it weren't for the car, if it weren't for the car, I'd probably hit the child. Most likely, right? Uh, if it weren't for my attitude, I'd probably hit the child. If it weren't for, you know, my hard work, the, work, the hard work I, I, I put in, I would have hit the child. Right. If it weren't for my faith in God, I would have hit the child. Right. And you know, then I thought about my uh, some colleagues of mine. You know. You know, like they don't have a driver's license because they lost it out of some reason. You had this other guy; he was in jail. The other guy, an alcoholic and stuff. Right. And you're asking yourself, like, what happened to them that they that they were that they became as such. Right, and I was like thinking maybe they actually ran, drove over a child, right? Maybe they hit the, hit a child with their car, right? Reckless driving, reckless behavior. I don't know, too fast on the wheel, and you know that hits you, man. I mean that's a shock, and then you losing your driver's license, right? And then you having to go to a psychologist to counseling to get that driver's license back. You have to talk to them, you know. You know why you're here, right? And yes, I'm here because I ran over a child with my car. I mean, you want you having to talk about your problems. Many people don't want to do that. They say fuck it. Imagine that. They don't want to talk about their problems. They don't want to be honest with their shit, with their problems, man. I was I'm a, I'm I'm like thank you God, man. You know, I'm always honest. You know it. You know what I'm saying? I'm always honest, but please don't put me through that shit. Don't let me talk let me talk with you, God. You know what I'm saying? Let me talk with you. I don't need counseling from a counselor, you know what I'm saying? When I, you know, when I need counseling, I need counseling from God. You know what I'm saying? I don't want, I don't want to have to talk to some other guy, to some, some stupid guy, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I don't need that. I don't need that shit in my life, right? I'm really grateful because like God slowed down the time. You know what I'm saying? I, I was like, think, you know, I was processing it in my mind how fast it all went and all this information that light speed that was you know between me and the child that was going on between me and this information right and then I was looking to the I was looking in all directions right because I was panicked and you know I actually thought I you know then I thought about it and I was like I thought I saw the Holy Ghost man you know what I'm saying it was like this light figure this light figure you know what I'm saying almost invisible but it was pure light and I saw like, you know, some kind of shrouding around it. And it was looking at me, you know what I'm saying? It was looking at me, the Holy Ghost. And and he was like asking me stuff, you know? It was like, you know, karma in my face. 
You know what I'm saying? It was like karma in my face. He was like basically reading my good deeds and my bad deeds, right? And it was like... <sighs> and he was confronting me with my sins, kind of like... You know what I'm saying? And then, I don't know, man. It was like he gave me the chance to react just in time, man. So he's like, kind of like he was slowing down the time. And it was all in the hands of this Holy Spirit. If I hit the child or not, there was nothing I could do. Imagine like you're a cop, right? Imagine you're a cop. I, I, I bet you. Imagine you're a cop and you know you... You know, imagine you're a cop and you're in this dangerous situation, right? And you know, you, for example, you have a, you have your you you have some kind of a suspect, right? And you know, you try to approach the suspect, and you know, the suspect could be armed. And let's say, for example, I don't know. Let's let's, let's say, for example, you think this, the suspect is unarmed, right? You really think so? You think like, okay, situation under control, right? And then, like, I don't know, the suspect draws a gun, okay? But let's say, that's good, yeah. But let's say the suspect doesn't draw the gun at you, so no, but, but he draws the gun at some bystander. You get my point? And, you know, the thing is, like, you know, he draws the gun in the, with the intention to shoot. Now, you, you see in all this. Now, what's your reaction as a cop? What's your reaction? You you know what I'm saying? So, of course, you know, you're thinking like the guy's unarmed. You're thinking like you got the situation under control. But then the guy pulls a gun and points it at a woman. At, at some bystander, right? He doesn't point it at you. And then he's getting ready to shoot. Now, can you react fast enough to stop the guy from shooting the bystander? You get my point? So, this is what I mean. This was the situation I was in. And it was this Holy Spirit that slowed down the time and you know that, 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 that gave me gave me the possibility to react if it weren't for this if it weren't for this holy spirit you know that shit would have hit i would have hit the child the shit would have happened and you know you stand in there you know what i'm saying as a wreck you get my point these, these moments man that's just, you know, I owe God. Really, I owe God. And, you know, if you're a cop, for example, if you're a cop and this shit happens to you, you know what I'm saying? No, make no mistake about it. It was God that stepped into your life. It was God that helped you out of that fucking situation. And, it's you know, it's God you owe. You owe to. You know what I'm saying? It's God you should fucking praise no matter what. Because, you know, God saved your ass. If not once, but t or, or, if not once or twice, it was that time that God really saved your ass. You know what I'm saying? It's really a... That is so... Whoa. Man, I don't know what to think about it, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm... I don't know if I should be afraid or... You know what I mean? It's it's supernatural. It's something supernatural. But you know... What you, what I gotta do is... I gotta work hard. That's, that's one good thing. That's one positive thing. Work hard. Right? No matter what people say. You know what I'm saying? No matter what people say. You say, oh, you working too hard and this and that. I know why I'm doing it. I know why I'm fucking doing it, right? I know why I'm fucking working hard, right? I'm not. I don't have any kids, right? I don't have a. I don't have a girlfriend, right? And I'm still working, you know, as a maniac. Work. I'm a work. Yeah, I'm a workaholic. <clears throat> I'm still a workaholic. I say like I'm a career guy, right? You know what I'm saying? I work hard to, you know. First of, if started out. No, that's the way I am. Right, that's the way I am because uh, I I, I want to prove myself. Right, and the, the the person I want to prove myself to, you know, ultimately is God. You know, what I'm saying I want to be worthy of God's. I want to be accepted by God, basically. Right, I want to say, Hey, God, this is me. What do you think of this? You know, what I'm saying, is this good? Right, is this good enough? Am I good yet? Stuff like that, right? And you know what I'm saying? And I just keep on going until I drop. So I don't give a fuck. I mean, that's what I am. That's how I am, right? I don't give a fuck. I just keep on going until I drop. So if I were in a worse situation, right? 
you will never fucking see me, you know, kill, like, kids like that. And if the kids were snipers, man, I'd order, like, you know, anesthetic shots. And I'd snipe those kids, and I'd send them, yeah, I'd send them to sleep. But, I'd, yeah, you'd never see me, like, slaughter kids. Never. Uh-uh. Imagine you, yeah. The Russians, man. Motherfuckers, right? Think of Afghanistan when the Soviets entered, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you got them Russians in Ukraine, man. Don't you think they they give a fuck about kids or 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 not kids when they're in them tanks and invading? They can't recognize a kid within that tank, can they? I bet you not. Imagine the kid. They running over kids, man. You know what I'm saying? Get, oh, everybody. Everybody, get ready, uh, get ready, and and be prepared because we're gonna invade you now. And if there are any kids, well, I'm sorry, we're gonna run over you. Yeah, imagine that you 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 send in all these kids into the border, and let's say, here, if you want to invade us, you're gonna have to run over all our kids first. Yeah, pff, yeah. <laughs> I mean, think about it, man. Think about it. You're know saying you got the Russians at their border and there's like nothing there and they're pointing their weapons at something at, at cities and towns where they're where kids are actually living and you know and you know the nato is pointing their shit at these russian troops and there's nothing else there you get my point and then you having to hear like stupid shit and then like ah, you get my point like i can't stand for this man really I mean that that what what happened w w between me and the child that fear in his eyes and you know it, it wasn't his fault because it's it was actually his parents fault for you know for him not having control over himself and over the situation it's because his parents didn't you know give him the information the right information right he was had this clueless look and the fear in his eyes right it was like he was yelling out for God too same way I was yelling out for God man and then God stepped into both our lives, right? God, you know, rescued the child, and God, you know, rescued me from hitting the child. You know what I'm saying? That was God, man. That was God, man. That was God in one swift, swift hit, in one swift strike, man, with God. And I was like, whoa, man. Maybe the kid dreaming of God, man. Maybe the kid dreaming of some angels and shit. Maybe he 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 li he hearing songs about angels and shit now. You know what I'm saying? And maybe he believing in angels, man. The kid, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it was an angel who saved me. Oh, I believe in you, angel. Yeah, man. And I was like, yeah, believe in that shit. Believe in that shit, man. Oh yeah, I still gotta play this game, man. Oh, there's a target. Well, you know. How am I supposed to do this? Freaky.
think that was anything. Would you go check? Oh shit. Was that target? Oh, it was the target. Alright. Uh Yeah, the plague. Who would they make resp yeah, who do, who do they who do they make responsible for this corona shit? The Chinese, right? <laughs> and you know what they say about the plague? What I heard in the document in these documentaries? They say it came from China too, the plague. <laughs> Say it came from China. Imagine that, man. It's crazy. Oh my god. Alright. Give me that shit. They say the play came from China. Man, I gotta go to sleep, man. Holy shit, it's late. I gotta go to sleep, man. I gotta work. Let me finish this real quick. Alright. <sighs> oh. Funny. How they can't see me. Not even this guy. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh great! Why didn't I? Why wasn't I able to to to? to uh, why wasn't I able to knock him out? Man, I'm I'm fucking tired, man. Yeah. I mean that was fucked up right wow. now. I'm sorry. Right? I'm tired, and I've been talking too long, and I gotta go to work tomorrow. And I have to repeat this when I'm refreshed and more concentrated. I'm like fucked up right now. So. That was the heartbreaking. 